everyone. Today we are looking at Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 14. Now 14 verses is a lot to get through in our short time together and so I went through and picked my favorites. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that but I did. <laughs> the theme of all 14 verses is is basically the same. So Paul is reminding the church in Rome and us today that sin and a life of sin, a life controlled by sin, was crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross. And that Jesus being resurrected back to life uh, purchased resurrection life for us as well, and a life free from sin, free from the struggles of sin. And so I'm going to read just a couple verses, like I said, um, and we're going to start with verse two. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? Verse six, our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ a decisive end to that sin, miserable life, no longer captive to sin's demands. Verse 10, from now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language. That means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. Verses 12 through 14, that means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of of God. So Paul is basically saying the same thing over and over and over again. Your old way of life is dead. It died with Jesus on the cross. And now we get to live in this beautiful resurrection, power filled life that is no longer controlled by sin. Now I realize it's, it's not as simple as that. Like, yes, that is a black and white truth. And we stand on that and build our lives on that. But walking it out can get a little bit trickier. We all still deal with sin, the struggles and the temptations in our everyday lives. So what does this look like? You know, if we can't take the word of God and apply it practically to our everyday Monday through Sunday lives, then it's we're not doing something right. We have to be able to apply this, right? And and the word of God has the power to transform us. So how do we do that? How do we begin to remember <laughs> and to walk out this resurrection life that Jesus purchased for us? The first thing I think we can do is we can meditate on scripture. There is power in filling our thoughts and our minds with truth and with the truth of the word of God. Um, I have some scriptures here that I encourage you to meditate on specifically surrounding this idea of our old way is dead and our new way is life in Jesus Christ. And the first is Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 17 says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And then Romans chapter six, verses one through 14, which is what we're looking at today. I read out of the message in case you um, wanted a similar translation to me. So those two things, fill your mind with this, fill your mind with these truths, let it permeate into your spirit, memorize some of these scriptures, let them become part of your belief system. It's a powerful thing. The second thing I think that is so important is we can ask the Holy Spirit to come alongside and to show us how do we live this thing out? What does it look like for me when I wake up in the morning and when I go about my day, when I lay my head down at night, what does it look like? What does resurrection life look like? He is faithful to speak. You guys, he wants us to live this way. It, it's part of his whole entire plan and his purpose for us. He's not hiding it. He wants to empower us. He wants to speak to us and lead us and help us live this thing out. So ask for his help. I think as we do those two things, we will see hope begin to rise up within us. We could all use a little bit of hope. I know that. 
and freedom, freedom from any shame or, or old mindsets, old ways of thinking about how we have lived or things we have done or whatever, because Jesus purchased freedom for us and he purchased a new way of living. And so I believe hope and freedom will begin to bubble up in our spirits and they will just become a part of who we are, um, as well as I believe the fruit of the spirit, uh, because as we continue to seek him and his way of living for us, we will see the fruit of the spirit actually take place and manifest itself in our lives, which is incredible. And who doesn't want that? I pray you're encouraged today. I pray that you'll join me in, in actually taking these verses and applying them to our lives. It's so important. Um, I'm praying for you. I love you all. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.